This video is on the topic of giving your dog a sniffy walk. Not everyone has access to where they can walk their dogs safely off leash where the dog can make choices. When I walk my dogs on leash, because I don't live in a busy city, all of my walks can be sniffy walks. But when I'm walking with multiple dogs, they don't have as many choices. So I will take my dogs out in smaller groups, but I'll also take my dogs out one at a time for some one-on-one -on -one time where they can make decisions on their own without another dog crowding them or wanting to go in a different direction. Sniffy walks are a great way for dogs to socialize with other dogs in a calm manner rather than become excited when seeing dogs thinking only of wanting to play with the other dog. They're a great way to introduce dogs for the first time. Sometimes you might have to be at a great distance from the other dog where you're calmly walking and letting your dog sniff and then slowly getting closer together. You might have to take multiple walks before you're walking right next to each other and there are some dogs that don't have to meet other dogs. And so you can take these sniffy walks with dogs that don't like social interaction, but learn that dogs are safe and they can be calm and relaxed and enjoy the presence of being around other dogs without the pressure of a more invasive social interaction such as going nose to nose or having the dogs sniff them. If you do live in a busy city where you have to maneuver through busy streets or you need to go down an apartment building corridor to get out, I suggest having a cue, which means walk on a loose leash near me, but we're keeping on going and then having another cue such as go sniff or go explore. With a cue like go explore, you either want the environment to be safe or you're managing them and the environment to keep them safe. So here they started to want to drink the water after splashing around in it. So I said, let's go and gave them a water break. For safety reasons, I suggest always having exploring and going sniff as well as parkour behaviors on a cue so your dog doesn't just offer them where it could be unsafe. If your dog isn't thinking to slow down and sniff and enjoy the environment, pretend that you're very interested in the environment and point out things to your dog, especially things that stick up like a tree, they might want to sniff, but as you can see here, if I just point randomly on the grass, they will find something interesting to sniff. Walking on a loose leash at your side is a wonderful behavior for getting through tight situations. It's also easier to train the concept of walking on a loose leash than when the dog is out ahead of you and having to control their movement without using you as a visual cue. However, I really like having my dogs walk in front of me so I can see the movement of their whole body while I look around and enjoy the environment without having to look down to check in on how they're doing and to prevent them from having someone reach and touch them without asking, which can often happen when you're not looking and someone reaches from behind. So I train two cues. Close means stay at my side and let's go just means a casual walk on a loose leash. If you have a dog that still needs quite a lot of space in social situations from other people and dogs, or you simply need a break, from managing the environment. Say for example, I like to walk a group of dogs and I don't like loose dogs running up to them. If they do, I will let go of the leashes of my own dogs, but I like to obey leash laws. I search on Google Maps from above and find nice areas of grass and bushes where the dogs can explore in a strip that is between busy roads or a busy road and a parking lot. You could also park your car and walk near your car. So if you see something coming, you can put your dog into the car and not have them have a bad experience. When giving dogs choices in group settings, it's important to give everyone a turn. Sometimes dogs will sniff something and then want to rush on before the other dog has a chance to sniff. And so I suggest teaching a default wait if one of the dogs is still not ready to keep walking yet. I like to have the bigger dogs walk in the front and the smaller dogs walk behind them if the spaces are tight. I suggest training each dog separately how to do a sniffy walk on a loose leash first before then adding dogs together. You can teach dogs to explore on either side of you without crossing in front of you to prevent leash tangling. However, because I like to walk my dogs off leash, 
I rarely walk them in a big group like this, so I happily let them intertwine. The only problem is that I have to undo the maypole that they create. And so when I'm doing that, I have to let go of the handles of the leash. And this is a time where if you had a dog that would run away from you um, while you're fumbling with the leash, it's not so safe. So you really want to have a dog that is safe, that if you were to drop the leash, they would still be around with you if you're going to be handling this many dogs. As I said earlier, the less dogs on leashes, the more choices they can make. So I take the time to walk the dogs in smaller groups and also do one-on-one -on -one time. Now I'm gonna show some footage of a sniffy walk with my Chihuahua Epic from yesterday. This is about as close as I like to keep her um, when there's corners where a dog could just come charging and get her. So I like to keep her this close to me. So I'm just maintaining the distance by following her when I say go sniff. And she doesn't go too fast because we've worked on her either walking or trotting. You want to go up there? So here's some pieces of food but she's not interested because we do a lot of training so um, she has a good leave it what she didn't like was that circle of trash blowing this is kind of a gross place so um, let's go the other way hmm? come epic let's go the other way actually let's go down this uh, this ramp So if she were to hit the end of the leash, like if I've stopped and she hasn't paid attention to me stopping, if she were to hit the end of the leash, say for example, I stop and she hasn't noticed that I've stopped and she readjusts to it being loose, I'm going to make the kissy noise, pop up, get her back and then move forward while she's on a loose leash. But she's already worked on the loose um, loose leash games and uh, giving into leash pressure. Epic! So sh if you had a dog that was very excited about something, you might need to take a longer break. So when you call the dog back, going pop pop, hi, you can make a real connection with your dog before you then head out. You can see how quick she turned around. Epic! Hi! So I'm gonna really connect with her and get her to calm down a little bit. Hi. Woohoo! There's a little kid behind us somewhere. Hi. And then we'll go again. Ready? Go sniff. Epic. Good. And I'm just reinforcing her with getting to sniff in the environment by listening to me. And if you do this training, this leash is gonna mean nothing to the dog and you'll have a dog that listens to you off leash. If your dog is listening to you on a long line without punishment where you're following the dog around, they're going to listen to you off leash. Hey, if you work on all their, uh, the things that make them overexcited. So if your dog did scavenge for food, you could simply just walk places where there isn't food all over the place um, and really work on your leave it until you're gonna be in environments where there's food, like this schoolyard. So sometimes I am picking the direction because I just start moving in a direction, but when I'm right behind her, I'm really following her. But if I get into her line of sight, then she will start to follow me a little bit if I'm looking like I'm interested in something like this. See, I've moved to the right and now she's moving to the right.
Good. Okay, go sniff. Go sniff. Go explore. Go check it out. Go check it out. Epic, come. Good. Go sniff. Go check it out. What did you want to see? Did you want to check it out? I like to go to this school because there are less people and dogs so I can have this longer leash and let her explore without dogs running over. And she can really enjoy making choices. It's a really nice school area. You be you. You wanna go back here? You can't cross the road though. Epic, you can't cross the road. Come on. It's either this way or no way. Hee <laughs> hee. In this video, I'm using six foot leashes that self collect in the middle of the leash. Using a leash like this or a flexi lead can make a situation more dangerous for your dog where you don't have as much control. So in a situation where something bad were to happen with a leash like this, you really want to be able to let go of the leash and still have your dog listen to you. I don't suggest using this leash unless your dog is already trained to walk on a loose leash and would naturally walk with you off leash. Otherwise, it could be a safety hazard.